My name's Chris Dickman. I'm a professor in ecology at the University of Sydney. So most of my research is focused in Central Australia, in the drylands. Something like 75% of Australia is arid. Around 35% of the world's population lives in, in these kinds of environments. And due to climate change, they're increasing. At the moment in Australia, there are very few people working in the arid parts of the country. So the work that we do, I think, is, is really important. Some of the, the most well-known early work was carried out in North America, and a lot of the underpinning of ecological theory was based on studies of rodents, a group called the heteromyids. So the heteromyids set the paradigm for how we thought that deserts worked. There was excellent research that came out of North America at the time that demonstrated that these animals respond in very predictable ways. They have uh, organised social structures and so on. And it was thought that all other desert systems work in the same way. When we started to look at the Australian desert situation, it was clear that the paradigm falls flat and that the animals in this part of the world are very different. They don't have stable home ranges. Their social organisation is incredibly flexible. The diets are very flexible as well to cope with the uncertain conditions. They're incredibly mobile. The longest movements of small mammals have been recorded in any world deserts are the ones that are found here. And they happen when, in a drought-stricken area, small mammals don't know what to do, but if they sense that it's rained 10 or 15 kilometres away, they'll just pack up their bags and move. So I think one of the big myths was what happens in, the, in North America is applicable to the rest of the world. That's clearly not the case. Science really provides a structured way of understanding the world that we live in. I think we're all seeing that there are huge changes underway. The human population, of course, is going through the roof. Natural systems are groaning and creaking at the seams. Without science, it's not going to be possible to make the demands that we make on the environment sustainable. One of the things about science, of course, is that it's a, it's a joint enterprise. And there are a lot of people who've been instrumental uh, for me in, in my career. Got the initial shock and uh, the, the humbling experience that, uh, that you feel. It's just a... Just a wonderful feeling.